video start! So I just got off of a really interesting D&D session, and I really want to tell the story of what happened. A little background, we're playing a campaign called Bronze Lords of Thunderdomia. In this world we are beastly creatures such as orcs, tabaxi cats, uh, lizard folk, uh, bird people, of, of all those kinds. And the era that we exist in is prehistoric, but we are becoming historic, like we're learning to write down history and we're learning metals. In this campaign we have an orc fighter, which is me, we have a lizard folk druid, we have a Kenku uh, sorcerer, and two tabaxis, one who's a rogue and one who's a fighter. The rogue could not make it to today's session, so she was kind of just on her own today. So today's game began where we left off, which was fresh after a battle. We just had gotten done resting and eating, and we saw some Sahagin or uh, Triton, you know, fish folk, come out of the water. And they are known as merchants, and they tried selling us stuff. I bought what's called a Potion of Invulnerability, which apparently cuts all damage in half for about a minute. The DM decided to throw this in there because I have a history of, you know, dying a lot. So we find an entrance to this cave, and I should probably backtrack a bit, we were in this area to find Shiny Rock. We enter the cave and we are ambushed by purple goblins. I'm a very... I'm basically the tank, I'm the one who's supposed to take a lot of damage, and I run in there and I start fighting. I take a lot of damage by the end of this and nearly die. And in the next fight I did die, but in, in D&D you, you don't die right away, you just get knocked unconscious and you have to follow a certain set of circumstances afterward to actually die. So I get brought back and I'm teetering around like 7 health when my maximum is 36. We explore around the caves a while and I find an axe. A special axe made of copper, most of our weapons have been made of stone until this point, and uh, it had some black inlaids inside there. Inlaids? Is that the right word? Okay, I did use that word right. Our DM hands me a special card. It's a Berserker Axe that gives me plus one to hit and plus one to damage. So I really couldn't say no to this. Additionally, when I held it, it felt light. So I'm wondering, could I possibly be using an extra weapon with this? I don't know. We move on and we, uh, we make our way to a stable that has spiders. These goblins can ride spiders. We found the Beastmaster, who we didn't know was innocent at the time, in his sleep, and I ended up cutting off his head. D&D mistakes. Eventually we found out that this entire cave of goblins was ruled by one goblin who was obsessed with becoming godly. He sealed himself behind a door which was protected by blood magic, and the only way to open it was by killing all kinds of innocent goblins, men, women, children, that were bound to that door. We're not bad people, so we're like, fuck it, we're not gonna kill innocent people, even if they're goblins. We come up with a decision to dig our way through from another area. We get a bunch of pickaxes, we come to an area that we think is like the closest to it. I put the pickaxe in my hands, and it turns into the great axe that I just got. Any weapon that I picked up would turn into the great axe. I eventually tossed the great axe away just as a test. I picked up the pickaxe again, and they just exchanged places. So I'm thinking, I got a really cool weapon here. It's got plus one to hit and, and, and for damage, and it's got a really light feel to it, and it's basically bound to me. So we start picking our way through, we eventually make it to the boss room. There's like four enemies in there, and then there's the boss. First action went to our lizard folk friend. He ran in there and, and made an immediate left, and that I don't remember what he did after that. Second action came from our sorcerer. He decided to cast darkness in the area. Third action came from our tabaxi monk, who has silence. So he cast silence in the dark area. So anyone inside the darkness can't see, and they can't hear anything. Now my orc you see, his name is Mordak. He's not exactly a smart orc by any means. He literally has negative 2 to intelligence and plus 0 to wisdom. So I run into the darkness because, you know, my lizard folk friend went in there, so I thought, hey, maybe I should get in there too. I was able to see one of the enemies before darkness and silence en encompassed the area, so I went in there and I just made a wild hit with my axe. Even at disadvantage, I was able to land a hit, which was just really awesome. It comes to our opponent's turn, and they were actually able to land a dagger inside me in the darkness and quiet. That's when everything went wrong. It comes to my turn. Our DM says, make a wisdom saving throw. And I'm just thinking, oh boy, what's gonna happen? I roll the d20, I roll a 5, and I don't have anything I can add to that. After that, he says that I go white with rage, and I have to attack the next person that's in front of me. And so it's like, okay, I've lost control a bit of myself, but you know, I'm attacking at my enemies, which is fine, right? So I'm forced to attack again. Whatever, I bring my axe down on my opponent, and the way it's described, I like hold on to the you know I'll I'll use I'll actually use a scene from Bleach that perfectly illustrates the situation. You, 
<gasps> oh, I loved that. Uh, afterward, he said that my character runs around through the dark silence, and I just end up stopping in the middle of it. it w w not in front of anybody at all. It's at this point that the Goblin King is finally able to dispel the darkness and the silence, so we can finally see and hear everything. There was a, there was a goblin not too far away from me, the Goblin King is in the other room altogether, and I'm just white, red hot with rage, ready to attack the nearest enemy uh, by me. My next turn comes by, and I attack what's called a gob guard, which is actually stronger than a regular goblin. I land my attack, and that was it. The DM was like, you don't have like an extra attack or anything? To which I say, no, I don't get extra attack until level 5. All I have right now is action surge, and that's just like an extra ability. To which he says, you have to use that. I'm like, whoa, okay, this is really intense rage right now. So I use my action surge, which gives me essentially another attack, but I can only do it once. I roll really low, which was like, alright, whatever, I just wasted that. And then the DM says, you gotta use your inspiration. Whoa, I am liking this axe a little less now. I'm really not in control of my character at all, and I'm using up all the stuff that I like to save. So I use my inspiration, I re-roll the attack, and it connects. I hit the goblin again. Still alive, but it's almost dead. At this point, the rest of the party has destroyed all the other enemies in the room, and they just killed the Goblin King. And so the, the lizard folk druid comes by, he comes by and he attacks the uh, goblin that I was attacking and kills him. And I'm thinking, great, I get to get control of myself again. The DM says, make another wisdom saving throw. Okay. I roll the d20 and it's really low again. And then the DM starts rolling dice. He then asks me, what's your modifiers to hit? Uh, it's plus seven. And he's like, oh, okay, that's definitely going to hit. Uh, what's your uh, damage modifier? Uh, that's plus five? And he's just like, all right, uh, Silver, the, the lizard folk druid, you just took 15 damage from Mordak. And it was enough to knock him out of the fight. So now, I am attacking my party. I still have the potion of invulnerability on me, so I'm taking half damage from all of them. And I'm just thinking, I gotta get rid of this axe that's more stuck to me than a clingy girlfriend. So I'm just landing attack after attack on my teammates. They just, they were able to bring back up the druid, but all their attacks... They hit me, but they're all doing half damage because of the potion of invulnerability. And I just keep failing all the wisdom saving throws to get control of myself again. There was a point where the druid cast like entangling vines on me to, to, to root me down in place. And I had to make a strength saving throw. Well, strength is my specialty, so I roll it and I get a natural 20. The way we described it was the vines crawl up my body, but I just basically flex and they just all fall apart. After a couple more rounds, finally the potion wears off on me and they're able to bring me down to zero health. They then tie a rope around the axe that was in my hand, but they still have to make a strength check to even see if they can even take it out of my dead gripped hand. Thankfully, they succeeded in that, and they were able to pull the axe out of my hand. Earlier in the cave, we found a hole that was seemingly bottomless. Like, we dropped a torch down there, we didn't hear any noise, it just fell endlessly, and we didn't hear any, any, any indication that it hit the ground at all. They brought the axe to that hole and dropped it, and the axe actually said, No! As like as as it fell down to the into the hole, and that's the story of how I almost killed my party today. I was actually harder than the boss. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed today's D and D stories. I hope to do them more in the future, or I hope to like record the actual sessions as they're happening, and then maybe put them out th out on here with the highlights. That's it for today, everybody. Take care.